So hello and welcome to another edition of Old Gold Club Big Match Revisited, powered by Blythe Group. I'm Mikey Burrows, alongside me as ever is Mr Chris Oelamo, and we have gone way, way back into the archives, <laughs> so far back that we couldn't actually get the full game, so we've missed the first couple of minutes of uh, a game that you played in. <laughs> this has saved me, missing the first couple of minutes of this uh, match has, uh, has definitely saved me, the kickoff. If I, if I, I'm sure. I'm sure one of our guests will remind me, as he does ever so well. Uh, I've fired it back to him, and it was a terrible straight from the kickoff. <laughs> and he took a his touch was let's say his touch was okay, but it put him under a little bit of pressure. And I just remember uh, the gaffer absolutely hammering him. And he's I think for the first five minutes of this match, he just kept on trying to get my attention. <laughs> I've just I've just got on with the game, Mikey. Well, I mean, we join it with Wolves on the attack, effectively. D did we miss anything in the first five minutes? What did you do else, apart from yeah. messing up the kickoff? Well, to be fair, that's something that... that oh, look, it steers happen. his hair. Yeah, I know, it's... Uh, <laughs> he's got, he's got a blonde mullet. <laughs> he's got a blonde... I thought this was 2008, <laughs> not 1998. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll tell him. Hey, please, hey, don't be all... Uh, don't give it the... Don't be all quiet when he comes on. You make sure you give him that. No, I will do. So, uh, to be fair, this one it was this was a good game. You know, I think we we started really well. Obviously, Forest they had the the little moments, but we just we defended well. We were very direct. It's something that we could do if the opportunity presented itself to play out from the back. We did, but if you look at Wayne, uh, he more often chose to go along to myself, uh, even when the option was on. You hear the gaffer many times in this match talking to him tell him to throw it out throw it out but uh, it's just I guess it's a safety option as well for the big man wasn't it but that's something that if, even if I wasn't going to win the header Mikey it was one of those things and you, you call it a lot I'll make sure the defender doesn't have a clean header so you'll foul him well I put pressure on him you know and I think I'll you uh, foul him no so basically what you're saying is we've missed about five minutes of you fouling no, because it's uh, it's it's still coming. <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 make it all up. Trust me. But uh, yeah, it's it's just one of those things. Then we pick up second balls and then we attack. We're in the we're in the attacking third with the ball. Like here, I don't win this one, but no, I did. I saw for me. Sounds got to do better there, isn't it? It's a great little flick on for me there, isn't it? It's a great little flick. Watched it all the way, uh, and then Silve his first touch. I just think there Silve doesn't need to beat his man. He just needs to. Doesn't even need to take control of the ball. He tries to lift it over there with the, the first touch, and he, he never had enough pace to go to the other end of it. But if he just lets that ball roll past him and then turn face up, Silva doesn't need. To. He just takes get get that yard and and, and ask the question. But these are something I think we we done really well. You know, like corners. We had good players. You know, that, that went on and attacked it. You know, like Neil Collins steals. You know, we had look at Jarvo. This is what I'm trying to say. This is what this is what this team's about. Like you see Jarvo there, Forrest are breaking. <laughs> That's another Forrest. foul from stairs. Yeah, but Forrest are breaking. And look at Jarvo, you know, what he brought going forward. But again, look at look at the positioning now, getting into position. What they talking to him? It's something there. Look at that, David Jones following the midfield run. Everyone was switched on all the time. You know, it was, it's like, it's, it is, it's, and this is something that you, the work that like TC and, and Mick would put in behind the scenes to make sure that everyone knew their responsibility not only look at me what am I doing I'm, to, I'm closing down the line there closing it down one side putting the pressure on did I even get a little no oh, fools doesn't give me a clap or nothing they're absolute shocker but that's well, what I'm saying Mike it's but like, this is where as you look at football now that Wayne would probably be passing this out you know and it's just not the way it is so it's now up to me make sure it doesn't come back if I don't win it they don't have a clear one so that's not a foul Mikey that's me just putting pressure on didn't win that one ball. yeah Mike, uh, Kite should put the ball in here he should look, look at me and self not happy with him Great well um, we've got loads of special guests to get through on this edition and one man who's been listening to it and may have some things to say about some of the comments Loom's already made the legendary midfielder David Jones how are you pal? Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Um, no, but brilliant to get you on. You've just heard Looms basically talking up his role, claiming that he was hard working all the time. <laughs> I've done my job, David. I don't, think, uh, that that yeah. little snigger, that little snigger. Don't don't go where you're going to take it. Okay, I'll put that to you now. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just listening to Looms. Um, yeah, all the team worked really hard. It came from the manager. Put good. 
Oh, we've lost him. We lost him. We'll get him back in a minute um, as we kind of continue on with this one. You're, I mean, so you're claiming that you were hard working. I don't remember that. Well, I'll tell you a story, right? After we went down to Watford and we were away at Watford, it was something that Mick actually spoke about when uh, when we had him on the, the old goal club. Uh, I was I was gone. My, my legs were compl- I was knackered, but I was working that hard that Silv was just cheating. And I remember the gaffer ha- like hammering me, saying, "You're doing too much. You're doing too much. Tell that lazy such and such." But but to, but it was just one of them. Silv for me, I just wanted to win. I, I never had to score, and that's what's different about Silv and the and the, the, the out and out strikers. I just wanted the team to win. So I'd do my work knowing that if one chance fell fell to self, then we would we would we would we would get that get the goal because he, he, he was clinical. It ended up I got I got the goal. I think uh yeah it's uh it's it's a long kick from, from Keems and it's the keepers come out, smashed me and it's came off my chest and, and trickled in. But uh there was some great games down there. So you have to work. That's that's just a basic requirement, you know, that's just running about channel runs not something I enjoy doing not something that if the manager knew me well they would they would try and not get me to do it because it takes me out of the, the danger area get people around me so yeah I think hard work it's a must and that, right. that comes in all different forms mate I know? think we've got Jonah back can you hear us Dave yeah yeah I can hear you yeah. sorry mate we, sorry, lo- we lost you yeah. wifi, mate. dodgy wifi what, what's going on mate? are you <laughs> where in the world are you not David sure. In, in your place I'm in the south, south of Manchester. France South Manchester South Manchester you yeah. your place in the south of France or <laughs> you know like, wherever you've got a few pl- properties yeah, all over the world haven't you so not quite <laughs> uh, what was that what was the kick off what were you describing earlier with the kick off we, we missed we missed the kick off and Looms claims that he booted it at Carl Henry remember I, I, oh okay and I fired at him and I remember his first touch it's, it's, he's had a good first touch but it's went to the side of him and it allowed them to press and I remember the gaffer Carl, Carl I'm sure he, he's, he's going to be coming on later hopefully uh, and he'll put his right but it was either that or Sheffield Wednesday at home but I think it was this game that I fired at him because he always said I don't I don't fire it you know it's the ball takes too slow so I think I've made a point and, and, <laughs> and, and, and laced it to him and he's took a touch decent touch to be fair for the ball that I gave him but then Mick, Mick's hammered him, and then for the first five minutes of the game, you just hear it now that little Chris, Chris, just to try and get my attention, yeah. so he could he could hammer <laughs> me back. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one of these things. And this and Dave, already you're you're getting the ball down in here, David. What was what would the gaffer say to you? What was your responsibility? Like you you and Carl made us. <laughs> Looms has just fouled, by the way. Well, I never, well, it wasn't a foul either. It was a disgrace. <laughs> That's never been a foul. I'm looking at the balls. Wayne's just played a long one up, and it's uh, me against Morgan. And uh, you fouled. Get back to your question. It's fine. What's uh, yeah? So, <laughs> how? What did what did Mick say to you? Because you 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 brought a calmness to to us whenever it came. I know it went over your head quite a lot of the time, but it was picking up second balls. But what did the gaffer say to you to, to for you to implement uh, your style in the match, yeah. Dave? Yeah, I think he wanted me to get on the ball and make things happen. You know, me and Carl worked well as a pair. You'd probably say at that time in our careers, Carl was the more defensive one and I was the more attacking one that would, you know, get on, get in the box and try and get on the end of things. Um, but yeah, he just kind of wanted me to play, but also you knew you had a responsibility in there that the minimum requirement was maximum effort and doing your job. So I just knew that if I did that, and then I needed to express myself on the field and make the team tick and make the team play. Yeah, you said there, uh, Carl being the defensive one, do you think he'd accept that as well? Because you know, like, finishing-wise and technique-wise, like, you two were right up there. Carl was probably one of the best finishers when it came down to finishing, but he never he never scored enough goals, did he? That was one of the things that he probably says himself, yeah. that he, he, he chose to keep possession of the ball rather than take that gamble and get the shot away, whereas that's something that you did many times in that season yeah I think you bang on um, you know Carl did have um, you know good finishing ability but I just think naturally between the two of us he would be the one that at that time in his career was just the one would probably see things defensively better than me so he would you know get in better better defensive positions and um, I was probably the one that was more 
attack minded I'd say slightly as, as my career went on I, with experience and things I developed my game defensively but I think at the time Carl was probably the more more defensive of the two well let's ask him hello Carl Henry <laughs> How you doing, guys? You okay? How are you doing, Carlito? <laughs> Diplomatic, Jonah. I like that. <laughs> Lumu, Lumu wouldn't have done that. Yeah, exactly. Under the bus in, the, under the bus in a heartbeat. Can you feel? Hey, if, <laughs> David, is, if your phone would have been vibrating in your pocket, mate, if, if you had said anything that was. Oh, here tomorrow. he goes. Let's just say, uh, I couldn't believe it. 30 seconds after I said it, I'm at the touch screen, live TV, mm, 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 the phone in my pocket, and then the abuse that I got, the the profanities that, that, was in, that I had to read as I was trying to keep my cool. But uh, Carl, you know how much this has <laughs> rattled him that he brings this up so often. I've, I've heard about this. Uh, listen, he knows. He knows. As a as a former player, you can't throw your mates under the bus, can you? You can. If, if one of you, Carl, it wasn't even your man, was it? But exactly. But you, the, everyone watching <laughs> thought it was. Thanks to you. Carl, <laughs> the start of this match was it? The start of this match that I fired the ball into you from the kickoff. Oh, I can't. I can't remember. I, I can't remember. I, I, did you? You took a dodge. You took a, your touch. Is it, it, it's been better at times, hasn't it? And then I think Mix hammered you, but for the first five minutes of this match, I just hear you shouting my name over and over again, just to make eye contact with me for the, was I? the ball that I, I, gave. I I don't remember that. I honestly don't remember it, but it sounds like something I'd do. <laughs> <laughs> I know you too well. What a save that is from Hennessy there. They're, to be fair, one of their only chances, and it's uh, ed, edge of the box, fired it. But it was what, what, what would you say was your connection then? Why, why did you two work so well on and off the pitch? Do you want to answer that, Jana, or do you want me to? I'll let, I'll let you take it, Carl. Yeah. Well, um, I think, like, listening to what, what Jonah was just saying previously about the, the balance, um, obviously balance is key, isn't it? If you've got two defensive-minded players, it doesn't work. If you've got two attacking-minded attacking, attacking minded players, it doesn't work. And um, the right foot, left foot scenario, we, we got on really well off the pitch as well. Um, often in midfield, um, I think maybe unlike other other positions on the pitch um, there's a lot that you need to share um, and and with Jonah Jonah's really is, is an unselfish player as well as being a quality footballer he's an unselfish midfielder and some players you play with in the middle of the park and they want to do everything themselves absolutely everything it's all it's the me show all about them and it, it's really hard oh Jonah's just scored a beauty goal which one was this what was that which goal was that oh it's a beautiful team That's move against Nottingham Forest mate Basically, you've just wiped somebody out with a with a brilliant strong challenge, and then we've worked it down the right hand side. Looms tees it back up, and here comes Jones curling it into the bottom keeper. Maybe should have got there. Bottom left corner. Bottom right keepers. Yeah, bottom left. As you guys look at it, what a goal! <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. That's exactly, exactly what you're saying. The, the balance. Me making the tackle and Jonah yeah, and um, putting it in the net to, to finish with. Because do you know what, like, I think we've talked about this in the past about, um, there was a goal, was it Spurs in the Premier League, where you guys did about 40 passes in the build-up to it. Do you guys feel like you still don't get the credit for actually how good a footballing team you were? What do you think, Dave? Well, yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I think that teams that often come up from the Championship um, to the Premier League often get seen as not really a footballing team. I know that's changed in the last like 10 years or so, but when we came, we were sort of seen as a battling team. You've got the manager who's Mick McCarthy, who's known as a reputation as quite a defensive-minded and organised manager. So um, we got a bit of bad reputation to do with being a tough team, but we had. if you look at our team, there wasn't many, you know, big hitters in terms of tacklers and, and putting ourselves about we, we did have footballers in the team so yeah I think it was unjustified and there was quite a few goals as you mentioned one there was the Spurs game uh, great football but yeah sometimes you don't get the credit for those so they just relied on you Carl what to do yeah now we, we had a few more than uh, myself I thought the, <laughs> the, the two at the back were were solid whether it was uh, it was Neely or Jody or, or Steers um they were solid. Big George, obviously, bless him, until he, he got that injury. Wardy would run through a brick wall. Kev Foley, defensively sound, maybe a, slightly cuter than some of the others, the way he'd go about it. But um, really good defender and a good footballer as well. But um, 
Yeah, we had, we had. I thought we had a really nice, nice balance as a team, and we, we did. We attacked. We attacked for fun, didn't we? I, I saw a bit of the, the season review the other day, and, and just seeing how much we attack teams, um, you could say it was argue that it was a more basic approach than today's game. But um, we, with with the same with Looms and, and Sylvan up top, complemented each other really well. Java would stay out wide. He would hug that touch line, which made it difficult for for the for, um, right backs to. to um, defend against him if they'd, they'd be in there tucking in worried about Looms and, and um, Sylvan and Java would be out wide all by himself Kites would come inside um, in between the lines and roam roam around and, and cause havoc I thought we had, we had a really nice blend You said there you know like the like fans can, can give you a little bit of stick you said we had the balance but you, you had a lot more than than what you're what you're giving you, you, what you're saying like you're saying the defensive side but you offensively technically Shooting wise, like I, I talk about it all the time, you're one of the best finishers in, 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 in a training session when, you, when you're shooting. Why did you ever feel a pressure to, to actually take the gamble? Because still, there'd be sometimes you, you you thought just keep possession of the ball, put it wide, create a different angle to put it in the box. But there's so many opportunities, and you probably probably say to yourself, Yeah, I probably could have took a shot there after after that, that moment's gone. So, were yet was, was, was the pressure never enough for you to actually to take that on board? or? Um, maybe sometimes when we were losing games, um, I, I felt a bit of pressure at times then. But other than that, I mean, I, my game, I knew what my game was about from a young age. I would put, I, I always made tackles. I'd always try and win the ball um, for, for the team and, and give it to players who, who I felt did have a little bit more. And, and maybe my striking of the ball was not bad. Um, but I, I wasn't a dribbler. I wasn't somebody who could get by players and... Um, with ease, Joan could get that half a yard really easily. People like Kites and and um, uh, and and Java on the other side would be. They were dribblers. You were great in the air on the swivel. You and Sylvan both could shoot. I think that's you know. You, obviously, I've, I've played with you a couple of times as well um, in my early days at Stoke. And the thing with strikers, that that instinct that you guys have, it, it it's not. It, I don't know. I don't know whether you can teach it. Is it innate? I don't think you can teach that. It's just something that you seem to just want. Goal after goal, boring goal after boring goal. For me, if I did score, I wanted yeah. it to be in the top <laughs> bin from 25 yards um, and it to be the perfect goal or or I wouldn't really be interested. But ultimately for me, I knew my role in the team. Well, you see that, right? So how did it feel when you scored a goal then? Because you did score them. You scored some. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so, but doesn't it doesn't it give you that 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 feeling that you you want to feel that as as much as you can? Um, yeah, it does. But I, I guess you just you don't have you can't do everything, can you? You can't do everything. So I, I would like Jonah says the defensive side for me. I, I think the defensive side of the game is an art. I love it. Like I actually really really enjoy the defensive side and the battle of wits of the wits. I, I love. Actually, do you know what? I love trying to read what someone's going to do. If someone's in my opposite numbers trying to thread a ball through, he's trying to give it the eyes, look left, or play it to the right. I want to be there and I want to block that pass, or I want to mop up. I can. See, I want to read that the ball's going in behind and see where danger is, and I, and I want to mop it up. And I think the problem with the problem with that is that if you're if you're positionally good or if you see things early, nothing ever develops. And yeah. the problem with that is unless unless you unless there's a minority report for football games. Uh, which maybe we're getting close with VAR. You're never going to know what may have happened had that player not been in the correct decision, uh, in, in, uh, in the correct position. Yeah. Um, so it often goes unseen, and I, and I see other players in, in, who play defensive midfield as well, or, or potentially um, defenders. I think with defenders, you, you're consistently heading balls away, clearing balls, so you're you're in the thick of the action. Often defensive midfielders, they're the ones clearing things up. And you don't often get that recognition, but I think that's the position that is, that's what that position is. And I think the players on the pitch maybe appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. The fans, not so much, but that's that goes with that position, I think. Boys, I'm conscious that we've got to let you go in a minute, because I know you're very busy guys, even though you're in lockdown and quarantine at the minute. Um, just before you do go, this game was obviously still quite early in the season, but you'd started really well. Dave, how much do you think that this performance and the result that you got from it made you think yeah we could be onto something this year I think it was hugely important I think it it was a statement it felt that we we would 
definite title contenders, um, not just with the performance, but with such an emphatic result. Um, it was such an enjoyable game to play in, and I think we got the fans, you know, optimistic in that game. And I, I think it was just before an international break, so it was a nice way just to have that two weeks after um, to reflect on the game and also gear up for the next set of games. So it, it was it was a poignant moment, I think, in the season. Carl, did you believe after this point, or did you believe earlier, or did it take a long, longer time? Um, no, I, I definitely. I think we all started to believe um, after this game. Um, I just think we we just knew, and it and it just shows how, how it, that it does take time as well um, for the managers, whether it's his ideas for it all to come together. It's 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 not easy, is it? You need. We, we've seen it so many times, but we had a, a nice blend of players. We had a, a, a great. Um, we had some real great characters in the team. We just, I think, and I think from that point of view, even from the pre-season, we all, we all knew that we had a good bunch. I think how, you, often you see teams that have a right mixture on the pitch. They've, 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 they've got a good set of players on the pitch, but maybe the dynamics are not right for one reason or another. I think we, had, we Mick had put it all together, um, and we were seeing the the fruits of that. Um, and certainly by the, the end of that, by that Forest game at half time, I remember going in at half time, and we were all just, wow, that was. That was unbelievable. They, they didn't know what hit them. I, th- I remember thinking, Jesus, they do not know what's hit them. They, they've come to Molyneux, um, probably expecting to do well them, uh, this that season themselves. And I remember just, I, I think, I, remember, I can't remember, was it the third goal? Or possibly, I think we scored a goal. They kicked off. And I remember Steve went to somebody, yep. won it back straight away, set Java yep. off. Is that your goal, wasn't it, Lou? You, you, you ended up. Not, yeah, yeah. That was um, my goal, yeah. And that was just we just knew our job so well, and I think yeah. it, when you when you when the manager's trying to get you to do something as a team, and you buy into it and it doesn't work, so you all buy into it and you're not getting the results. It's hard to stick with it and to have to keep the faith. When when you've worked on on through all these um, when you've worked on this on your team on your formation on on the way you want to play out on your philosophy through pre-season, and you start the season really well. You, the belief just grows, and and it's um, it, that that momentum. You start that momentum, and it's really difficult to stop it. And it wasn't until after Christmas, I think, where teams figured us out, where they started dropping deep and, and making parking the bus, and and it was a different. The second half was a very different season to the first. Listen, guys, it's been brilliant to get you back together. Get the debate club back together. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm, all, I'm I'm ready when you you guys are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> should 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 pundit should former players stitch up their pre that can be the first topic. Should they should they go easy on their old teammates, old teammates from two clubs or or should they just be cutthroat? Look after themselves. Mate, you're, you're at that side you're at that side of the, the fence now, mate. So no sitting on it please. Ex- no, definitely not. <laughs> Listen, you know me. Anyway, that's guys. It's been a pleasure. Brilliant. Thank you, Carl. Well. Yeah, thank families are well and everyone. Yeah, all the very best to all you. Right. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, David, as well. Good to have you on with us. Thanks very much. Take care, guys. Cheers, mate. Speak to you we'll soon. See you later, mate. Have a good one. Two absolute legends. Two players who've complimented each other. And you can tell, can't you, a little bit as to kind of how they work. They, they work quite well as a, a pair. Because I mentioned debate club. People might not be aware. There used to be a Wolves, back before Wolves TV was a proper thing, the three of you used to get together, didn't you? Yeah, well, it was just one of those. I think we were always quite opinionated. I think me and me and Carl were quite quite loud with those opinions, and and David was, yeah, he could he could be cutthroat. You know, he he chose his moments, uh, and it was quite a quite a good little uh, travel act, you know. So it was uh, no, it was good. It was good. It was enjoyable times. We spoke about we spoke about everything that was going on. You know, it was. Like uh, reality TV, politics, you know, it was all sorts of things that, that came up. Football, I think fashion shows as well, you know, it was, yeah, it was it was good times, you know, but like I say, it was, we were having a very enjoyable season. There was a lot of positives around the place, you know, I think Carl uh, is talking about the manager buying into what the manager's saying, but the players bought into themselves here as well, you know, the, the demands that they put on each other, because it's very easy. You know, if you, you, you look at you look at what people say about players that don't don't can I put Is that you back something? defending by the way? I, that's what, apart from this the set face. This was a responsibility, Mikey, you know. Get yourself back, you know, it's put the head on it. You, 
this is what I had to be good in both boxes. <laughs> you know, this allowed the likes of Sullivan to stay up or stay at the edge of the box. But that's that's the one thing. If 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 eight of the if eight of the ten uh, outfield players could done their job, then it allowed you to have a bit of flair. That's why Sylv could could be a little bit lazy. That's why because he's in the box now. This is when he came alive. Sylv a little bit exactly. lazy, controversial. Oh well, you know what I mean. You, you know what I mean. He knows that, as well. <laughs> he, knows that. He, he he had that desire to score goals. In the final third, he came alive. I'm trying to see who that is, Looms, that's just wiped out Kitely with the bleached blonde hair. And I want to say Lee Martin from the lineup that they had. That's who it is, yeah. I mean, that is absolutely shocking hair, matched in this game by Richard Stearman. Hello, (laughs) Steers. Don't take it, Steers. Oh, he's not. We can't get him. We'll get him on in a sec. He can't, can't hear him just for the moment. Um, but he had absolutely un- I know he probably can hear us terrible hair just terrible terrible hair in this game he just he just went with it he never he wasn't a sheep he, he created his own you know he was uh... oh there's the own goal oh 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 <laughs> he doesn't know get the ball doing a lot mate it's all good look I'm even going to solve you could mate did it touch you I'm saying did it touch your ear take it I'm trying to celebrate with him look <laughs> Were you saying? Sorry. Were you kind of not in a competition for goals at this point? No, he hadn't stopped talking to me. At this, he was still talking to me here. It was only when uh, I kicked on a little bit with a few goals. I got, I think, a brace against Blackpool, a brace against Sheffield United, and I think it was. I say I think I was on 15 goals in 12, 12 games, and then I think Silv was on I think 12 or 13 goals, and then. He never spoke to me until he got he got that one in front. <laughs> so, and I've, I've, I said to him, didn't I? I said to him the old goal club that he, he said it wasn't, but it just must be one of those. And that's that's what made him the player that he was. That's what gave him the golden boot two years in the bounce, you know. He just had that desire to score goals. But we had a good partnership. I'd say definitely for the team, but if we won and Silv hadn't scored, then he, he wouldn't he wouldn't enjoy it. And I've played with a lot of strikers. Troy Deeney. Oh, here he is. This goes on. Here he is. You taking that steel? Oh, you got me. Through the hair, mate. Oh no, it was a good link, though. I'll give him that. But there was, there was a bit of blonde hair on show in those days, wasn't there? I wasn't the only one. Mate, you've got a blo- you've got a blonde mullet. You got a blonde know, mullet in this game. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is, isn't it? We just we go and we move on. <laughs> Steels, what's your what's your what do you remember about this game, mate? Um, I've been reminded that I scored an own goal and I just seem to think that it wasn't me it wasn't my fault it wasn't I, di- I didn't know whether that was just the, the defender in me to deny, deny, deny but uh, talking to Foles he seems to have claimed it hasn't he so I'm pleased about that um, I just remember us being up we were on a it was a good start to the season wasn't it we picked up a draw won a, won a few games and then bang we we, it sort of, we arrived and we played fantastically well uh, everything just seemed to, to hit the back of the net, didn't it? And, and yeah, we went on from strength to strength from there. See this game, Steels. Did you? Did we go to Glasgow after that? Were you in that group or not? To watch the cup final, yeah, I went. It, looking at the the stats, here, it's, it was an international break possibly after this. So I thought I might have been away with international, but yeah, I, I went to I went to um, the game. With, was it the old the, firm you lads yeah. went to? It was the old firm. Yeah, it was the old firm. Right, so that's the eight then, isn't it? So it was it was me, it was my mate Ash, Matt Murray, uh, Kevin Foley, Wardy, Neil Collins, and yourself. Oh, was, there's only seven. Keo was in there, wasn't he as well? Keo, there we go, there we go. That's the eight sorted. So basically, you lads were under pressure to win, otherwise Mick wouldn't have let you go. Well, oh, you never yeah. knew we were going. If, the, if there was a night out plan, you you had to win. Yeah. yeah. There's no two ways about it. Otherwise, it would get back to management, and you would then you seriously under pressure. You lads must have had a lot of nights out in this first three months of the season. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll let Loom's answer that. I'll, not me, mate. Not me. I just I used to <laughs> just listen to all listen to all the antics going on. It was different class. Got me through. Fantastic. That was just one of those. This this match really stands out for the fact that I think it was Wardy before the match says we have to win we have to win this match today because 
like it was I, I don't know if it was it was one of the players that hadn't been to an old firm was that you was that your first old firm I, I hadn't been yeah I hadn't been yeah and he said we have to do it and he, I remember him saying it before the match but we did just I, I think the connection that all the players had the demands that we put on each other you know I think we we had a great balance all throughout the team you know defensively attacking whatever it was so you know I think Carl's put that down to Mick but I never really seen Mick do a lot of work with the players off off the pitch, of course they put the basic requirements in there, but you, it, it takes for the players to kind of put that in themselves. You know, they have to they have to take it on board. You you'll do the work that you need to do for your man uh, Neil Collins, who's who's beside you. You have to have that connection. You, have, you need to communicate. You need to put those demands. You need to have a go when you need to have a go. And I just think that's something that we did well. We spoke to each other well. We respected each other, but with the demands we put on each other as well. Yeah, I think I think what Mick did was he recruited very well, didn't he? Obviously, did his homework on on the players, and, and we oh. we all bonded and, and gelled, um, you know, together. And, and you could see that both on and off the pitch. Of course, winning um, helps bring you together, but um, we, we had that in abundance anyway. Steers, I've just watched you. I've just watched you skin three players inside the opposition half, admittedly lose the ball, but then get up and sprint another ten yards to go and put pressure on. And now here you are tidying up back in your own penalty area. He's an all-round player here. <laughs> Still, see, see in the gaff. Days, see, I used to dribble, yeah. See, but what did the gaffer really say dribble. to you about that? Because it's one of those. You, that was part of your game. You were comfortable to get on the ball and run forward. They're looking at centre backs today, worth eighty million because they can do that. But did the gaffer try and drill that out of you, or did he just have to accept yeah. that that was, was part of your game and you were going to do it anyway? I think he, he liked it when it worked, and then when it didn't, I used to get an earful. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> I think he knew I like I was partial to to the odd step over or Cruyff, and he just <laughs> kind of let me get on with it because um, we were doing well. But yeah, like I say, when it when it didn't come off, uh, I used to get it get it in the neck from him. But is that um, would you put you know, would you put that down to you being being able to play all over? You know, like you you can you could put you in midfield, you could put you all over the, the, the pitch is that something that was just part of your game is that because through your your your, your academy and your your yts is that something that was just in yeah you as definitely a i think it, yeah it was just in in me in my makeup as a player that um i was comfortable on the ball and i, I like to do the old croy it just it just happened to be um like i say part of my makeup it used to come out in games and and yeah i was as um you know, I was pleased with with the way this season went for me personally. Obviously, the the um, the end result of us getting promoted was fantastic for the team, but um, I, I was very pleased with with my performances um, personally. I, I think I ended up in, in team of the year as well. So, um, so yeah, so the course must have must have worked. Steers, I know you've got to go. So, just to confirm, you're claiming that it wasn't your own goal, right? Yeah, have a good look at it. Get VAR oh. on it and, and let and let me know what you think. I, I seem to remember it was a severe injustice that I, I got credited <laughs> with the, with the own goal. So, I, as I can't see it now, I'll, I'll I'll leave it up to you. All right. Cheers, mate. Uh, we wish you the very best. Stay you. safe. And you stay safe, guys. Have a good one, mate. Have a good one. See. What an absolute legend, Richard Stearman is. Um, just someone's just rattled the crossbar. It might have been Kitely. It was, yeah. Um, did you see where it came from? Just me making a complete nuisance of myself, and that was it. I wasn't ever going <laughs> to win the ball, but that's the thing. So basically, try and get yourself as if you're going to chest it down, make sure it's not a clean header. Morgan gets the header, goes to Kites, hits it from about 25 yards off the bar, and then it must have got him in the mood because a couple of minutes later, he does hit one from distance, and what a strike it is. You just look all over here. Look, that was David Jones with the, with the corner there. They, they defend, Carl Henry picks it up, we know exactly where we're going. We know exactly. We have a picture in our in, in, in our mind uh, before we receive the ball. Look at that as well. That's what Silv does. You know, the ball comes to him in the D. He just he just lets the ball roll and gets a shot away. He knew where, he knew where the goal was. Doesn't hit the target at that time, but he was. He just he had that that selfishness in him. That just that I want a goal. I'm hungry for goals. I don't care about anything else. I want goals. You know and. When you when you had a bee in his bonnet, then you'd see him running about and like like putting that 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 work in. But more often than not, he still would come alive. His link-up play was excellent, but he'd come alive in the final third. But look at this—you you see it. 
Wardy will be talking to David Jones, he'll come and put the head on it. And it's there's always then Neil Collins will come round and cover. There's everyone's talking all the time, everyone knows their place. Look at that. David Jones takes a man away, Carl Henry comes in for the throw-in. I've got to do better there. The ball's got to stick, it shouldn't come straight back like that. But then look, Sylvan, great first touch. Who picks up the second ball? They've got it now. Look at the work. Kite's coming back. It's all over the pitch. And this is this is what got us promoted. With without the ball, we were we were high energy. We pressed. We probably worked too hard without it. Oh, you know, Dave Jones was just an unbelievable crossfield ball to Java. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, this is what he did, you know. He's technically oh, Wardy. This is why Wardy can go left back. See the challenge he just put in? You know, I've never challenged like that in 20 years as a professional footballer. Um, so it's just. Well, yeah, you've, you've made some crunching tackles, it has to be said. Well, that wasn't a great one from Carl. Uh, it'll be a corner to defend. In the meantime, let's bring in another one of our guests, Mr. Michael Kiteley. How are you, pal? I'm good, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, How are we? We're good, mate. We are 2-0 up. You've just rattled the crossbar a couple of moments ago. Things are going pretty well. I'm confident in this game. <laughs> I'd like to put a bet on it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's not only what you bring going forward, Kate, it's that you what your sort of oh, Is this your is well. this Kite's goal? No. Sylvan was breaking forwards then. He had a three on two. Yeah. I've not yeah, so, I've not I can't remember this. I've not watched it through properly. Java I've, oh. I've not watched this game properly, I've just seen the goals. Who scored the second goal? Was it you Looms? It was an own goal, mate. It was an own goal. Oh yeah. Uh, the keepers came out and punched it, and it came off, uh, came off the head, and, and went in. Yeah. Surprisingly, kites. He was trying to tell Sylvan to claim it rather than claiming it himself. Yeah, well, I'm well, surprised. I, said, I, I, I thought I remember you running off like you'd scored like Shearer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said to I said to Silv, it's it, it, even if you feel it, if it's a like nick your ear or something, you claim it. And then I started celebrating because he said it's clipped his ear. But uh, yeah, that is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> How long has gone? Twenty minutes. Uh, no, we're deep. We're deep into this now. We're, I say we're approaching your goal at some point. Um, because we went. We, you, did you score just before half time, Looms? Didn't you? I got the fourth. Yeah, but it's yeah. just straight from. So we we you score, then they kick off. Carl Henry wins it back straight from the kick off, and then puts Jarvo in, and Jarvo slots me in. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, what would, what, would, yeah. what what you know that like kites you know obviously you, you, you the gaffers the gaffers brought you in he knew exactly what you're about but did he give you a freedom the gaffer to to obviously do to play the way that you did or was that just is that just a natural thing because you he never had to tell you to walk back and track back you know you that was just something that you naturally had to your game wasn't it yeah i think the fact that i'd obviously come from non-league that was sort of ingrained in me to, to work hard um, and then once I started sort of playing Mick sort of gave me that sort of license to sort of express myself and, and do what I wanted going forward because he knew that I would work hard coming back um, and, and we were fortunate that I was doing it on one side and Java was doing exactly the same on the other side so it was, uh, it was working well and then obviously with, with yourself and Blakey up front we were, we were dangerous because yeah, you called it early doors, I can't remember who we were playing pre-season match, and I think we, they, they, they obviously we had too much uh, footballing wise for them, but they tried to kind of kick us, kick us off the pitch, and we just, we went physical with them as well. And I remember just sitting on the the bus on the way back after the game, and you says we we're going to get promoted this year, and it was I don't know, it was like three games into to pre-season, I think it was. I'm just trying to think who who it was. Was it Walsall? Was it Kidderminster or something? It was. And I, I, can't, I can't remember it was either. You beat Kidderminster in pre-season and you were claiming that you are going to get promoted. Because <laughs> we had it all, mate. We had it all. We had the physical side. We could play. We had the expansion. You know what I mean? We were clinical. You know, you had the experience there. You had the youth there. Everything was just... We, we ticked all the boxes. It sounds like you're all delirious from pre-season training. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, possibly. <laughs> the thing was, because obviously I'd been there a couple of seasons before and, and we'd come close a couple of times to the playoffs and then we added yourself and, and, and Blakey, we knew Blakey was always going to get, you know, a bag full of goals and and I think 
Jarvo, you know, was was going to then sort of progress, and, and I was progressing. I think everyone was just progressing at the right time, and I just felt that we were in a, a real good physical state as well as a squad. I thought we were strong, as you said, we were we were hard working. We had, you know, we had pace in the team. Uh, we, we just literally had everything. We could go long up to yourself if we were struggling a little bit, or we could pass teams off the pitch. We we sort of had, you know every part of the game that we needed and I just felt if we could keep everyone fit that we would we would go on to, to do well and obviously the start of the season we had was was unbelievable I think you know we went eight games unbeaten and then lost one and then done another eight games unbeaten Kite yes. I, um, I found the I found some of the original match reports from the time and there's, yeah. there's some brilliant quotes from Mick in one of them where he talks about, it says, the, the report, this is in the Independent at the time, says, Kitely received plenty of attention from the visiting defenders. I'm just going to check whether we can come through. Um, and was picking himself up off the floor all afternoon, and Mick said, I'd kick him if I was playing against him. <laughs> yeah, but see, things like that, little things that the manager's coming out and saying that, that gives you so much confidence and, and I think Mick was good at that and so I, I would read that or hear him say that and it would just fill me with confidence and I just felt that belief from Mick and that, that just helped me in, in, in the next games coming up and I think he was like that with a, with a lot of the players you know um, everyone that I speak to that played under Mick feels um, feels that from Mick and that's why we did so well yeah well his quote his quote here sorry Loons his quote sorry, he says, says it said um I had this thought last season when I signed Matt Jarvis and Michael Kitely that this was how I wanted to play and then Jarvo got injured and Kitely got injured. So you could have been doing all of this in this style of marauding play a year earlier. Yeah, well, well that was it. Jarvo came in, I think he had, I think he had like a hernia and groin problems and I, I picked up an ankle injury. Um, so yeah, it was a bit frustrating but... I'm not just saying it because Looms is on the phone, but I felt like we was a, a striker missing. I think obviously we had Blakey, but we needed a target man. And Voxy came in, but he was Voxy was only about 17, 18 at the time. So we, we were just missing that target man. And then obviously when Looms came in, oh. it, just, it just felt that it uh, clicked. Kites into the top corner. Goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> Awful celebration, but what a goal. How's What's the celebration? Happy, eh? What was the celebration? Do you know what? I think the, it was the, 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 the Usain Bolt. Yeah. Usain Bolt. Yeah. <laughs> that 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 game. I remember I had a couple of my mates come up from uh, from Essex um, to watch the game, and we were going out in Birmingham that night. And they said, if you score, I want to see a celebration. And they said that celebration, so I did it. Don't know. Don't know what came over me. Would you say that there was a, an arrogance about us as a group? Because this is something, I know that we're, we're in a very good moment, but I remember big matches, Cardiff away, Ward, they come up and saying, if you score, I want this celebration. You know, there was no fear there, was there? Did you get nervous for games? Or was there just that belief that we were going to win every match? Yeah, I, think, I, I wouldn't say arrogance, because we weren't like that, were we? But I think we just had that belief that we could we could score goals whenever we wanted really oh, do you remember Jarvo remember? flying Lua Lua has to finish oh there it is <laughs> what's the celebration though oh oh that's outrageous uh, sorry mate <laughs> that is outrageous <laughs> I don't know what's came over me I think I just had to yeah was, how can you yeah. turn away from Matt Jarvis Matt Jarvis is here Jarvo we've just seen the moment where Looms has completely custard pied you I remember it very well. Yeah, mate. I've done. I've, I've done my push-ups for you. I've done my push-ups in the in you the certainly. airport, mate, for you. So don't. I feel like there should be another ten, just just for this coming back. Yeah, it was one of those. You know, I think Jarvo on this day was unplayable. You know, even defensively, what he was bringing, but going forward, unplayable. Every touch, you know, the pace. I've never seen. Unbelievable, and then the quality just to execute the pass at the end of it as well. You know, I, th I think the quality left and right foot jar will both. You know, if they, they, they try to kind of force you onto your right, you come back, you put it in, they force it onto the left, and the quality is still, you know, at different class. But it was must it must be a game that you it was uh, it's near near enough perfect for you. Yeah, I mean, when everyone picks out a a 
particular game, that one always gets uh, gets thrown up. It's just, I think, yes, on a personal note, it was brilliant for myself. I really enjoyed it. It was great that I could exploit the, the weaknesses, use my pace, put the crosses in, as you said. But I think as a team, that first half performance, that first 45 minutes, I don't think you, you could possibly see a, a better performance from a side. Um, we, we dominated in everything and the, the quality that we showed throughout the whole of that first half was was absolutely incredible and I remember going in at half time just everyone was just absolutely yeah you know, I you know the, the feeling in the camp was just incredible because we knew that we just put in an unbelievable performance you could have had a couple more you know from watching some of these highlights yeah there was there was numerous chances it's just yeah I think especially first half I think we did take quite a lot of the chances that we had I think second half it's always a difficult one when you um, when you when you go in at half time so many goals up second half always has a little bit of a lull but even still we we still put in the uh, the chances and created them it's just you know don't always take them but uh, at the time it, it didn't uh, it didn't really matter I think that that performance was one of them that it it really showed us players in our, in our change room although we already knew I think we, we, we sort of knew after that performance that we really are going to have a really good opportunity that season Jav it was something that you always obviously you Kate you always worked on your crossing in that you know probably more so yourself uh, the, the crossing side was there ever I know that you, you like to come in you like to score goals and that as well but first and foremost when the ball comes to you you know that you never really had that selfish side to you to say, right, I'm going to go and get myself a goal. It was always about, can I put good quality in? Where, where am I going to go? Can I go across the front? Can I hang it up the back? Was that something that maybe, is that a little bit of regret now or, or not? Is that, because it's like scoring goals, is, yeah, for me, I, there's no better feeling in football, isn't there? But for yeah, you, it was all about pass. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. To, well, I, I pretty much agree with all of it, to be honest. Um, I, think, I think for me, uh, right from the start, I always, my, my sort of role in the team was, was create chances for others. And, and, uh, and my, my sole thing was focus on, right, get the ball. Can I take my full back on? Can I put a good cross into the box? And over the years, we, we worked on it. If you knew my movement if I would knock it down the line and I was going it was going to get to the byline it was going to be dinked to the far post so you could make your movements to where you were going to be if I was cutting back on my right foot you knew you just had to get along that line with the ball if it missed everyone it was going in at the far post it was just one of them things that you, you work on it so much and everyone sort of would understand where and what you were going to do and, and that helped the team I think looking back now and even still now where everyone like with like Ronaldo Messi statistics are so so, you know, so in your face at the moment, everyone just looks at goals, assists, and I think for me personally, yes, I probably should have been a bit more selfish and cut inside a lot more and, and shot and got more goals myself. But at the same time, uh, you know, I, I don't regret it because that was my what I thought I, I enjoyed. You know, the assists. Don't get me wrong, scoring goals, as you said, there's no better feeling. But. Um, you know, I enjoyed that role of, of creating opportunities for, for others to, to score as well. Kites, was it the same for you? Uh, um, no, I, I probably I like scoring goals. I, I enjoy scoring goals. Um, I think Jarvo had that where we, you knew he was standing someone up and he was going to just burn them with pace and, and he was always going to get across him. Where I was probably a little bit more selfish trying to probably maybe get a shot in. But... I, I'd like to think that if I had a, an option to pass it to someone or to cross it to someone, I would. Um, and I think what Java has just said there it speaks volumes to, to not only himself, but the, the team. And that's how we was as a team. No one played for themselves um, and everyone played for each other. And that's why we did so well. In a way, though, does yeah. that, is that kind of, does it show that you think about it you, you know Jarvo talks about the way he played it you were ever so slightly different we had Dave Jones and Carl Henry on earlier and they talked about how you know they complemented each other in the way that they played and I, I've talked to Looms loads of times about the way that he and Sylvan complemented each other that you don't have to be the same type of player to complement each other is that fair? Yeah I think that's definitely fair I think you need to be in fact I think you need to be the opposite to be honest I think um, if we had all the same players then we wouldn't be um, as successful as we was and I think you know Carl Henry was always the one that sort of sat and, and broke things up and Dave Jones sort of got on the ball and, and sprayed it about and 
they worked really well together. I worked really well with, with Kevin Foley down the right, as Jarvo did with, with Wardy down the left. And, and obviously Looms and Blakey had their, their partnership. And, and that was throughout the team. Everyone had their own little partnerships. And it just that season, it just went so well. And obviously we went on to, to win the league. So we're, the fans were wrong when we sang that it was we all dream of a team of Gary Breen's. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think Breeny would have scored too many goals up to the top. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're at half time in this game. What's going on, Looms, in the dressing room right now? Yeah, I think, like Carl said, we're, we're sitting down. We're, 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 it's it's near, near enough the perfect half that we've had. I think uh, we're, we're allowed to think about the, the, the night out. Already, probably, probably unprofessional, but yeah, we've definitely, it's definitely come up. The eyes, the eyebrows have been raised. The little looks to each other, thinking, "Oh, it's going to be a good night tonight." Uh, but we just go out and, and make sure that we, uh, we, 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 we do, the, we do the same. Obviously, we know that they're going to come out. They're going to get an absolute rollicking at, at, at half time, and, 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 and we're going to see the reaction of that. But like I said, we never feared anyone, no one at all this season. I think we are complete confidence and belief in, in each other and ourselves so uh, I think Mick what can Mick say he, he, he would probably try and talk about some negatives uh, but there's, there wasn't many you know I think like you say that everyone the balance was right communication was right you know I think uh, I'm just trying to think I think Neil Collins had a little a little a little dodgy one but I think even Mick I think then at the time just he, he said uh, told him just to kind of be on the front foot be alert but he has to he has to talk about some negatives, but there weren't, there weren't many. Um, Jarvo, we've just been talking with kites. I found some quotes and for, uh, from the time where Mick was talking about what he had this idea, kind of a year before this game, of the two of you flying down the wing, and unfortunately you both got injured the season before. Were you aware? Did Mick ever say to you, "Look, I've had this idea. I, I know." I know a way I want to play and it involves you two specifically no he, he never specifically said to me right you know this is this you two uh, you two are my you know main wide men this is this is the way I want to play he, when I first signed he said you know he wanted to play with wide men he wanted to get width and get crosses in the box he never once said to me right I'm signing you you're going to be starting every week you're my main man that's, that's not Mick I don't think he's ever He's ever really said that he he likes to keep the competition and and keep you working hard individually. But I think you, once once me and Kites eventually got to play together regularly, I don't think you you could possibly change it. If I'm honest, the way uh, the way it sort of worked and the way, like you said, we we were we were very different players. Kites used to love to to get in, uh, you know, pick it up just inside, uh, not keep his feet on touchline as much as sort of maybe I did. But it was uh, it was just the compliments like everyone everyone had in the team. I think, especially for us, getting the ball wide, getting crosses in, and we had incredible uh, strikers. Not just Looms and Blakey. You had like Sam Bokes that was <coughs> coming on as well. You had Keo. You, you had these players that used to just come into the team and, and score goals when called upon as well. Who were the backups to you, Kites? My, I was just about to say there, Mike. I, I actually got a phone call from Mick when I was on holiday in the summer. Um, I, was, I remember it clearly. I was in Egypt, and he he rang me because um, I think I might have signed a new contract that that summer. And he said, "I'm just about to sign a lad from Gillingham called Matt Jarvis." And he was like, "He's got bags of pace and loads of potential." And he, and he actually said to me, "The two of you can cause a lot of damage in the championship next year." And, I, and to be honest, I didn't I didn't really know too much about Jarvis at the time, so I googled him. And, um, was Google around then? Yeah, it was around, not that old, Ricky. Come on. So, so it was clearly in mixed thoughts that you know me and Jarvo were going to be these, these sort of main wire players. But as far as sort of competition, I, I, um, I can't really think who we had. Who else would was play there? Well, Foles used to come in and play when the Zoobs arrived, but there wasn't really a lot for. For the right hand side, was there? No, Mickey Gray he came in, didn't he, for a bit, and he he, he could play either what you know, wing, he could come in on his left foot, or he could play wide left. Um, but that season that we got promoted, you know, me and Jarvis um, stayed fit, and, and so did a lot, of the, a lot of the lads. You know, the treatment room wasn't that full, so um, it was quite it's you know, it was good, good, 
I think just it was. Yeah. I think I think yeah the the midfield that that kind of stayed the same. Never really kind of rotated much. And I think that obviously I think you look at the centre backs. You, you lost Jody Craddock early doors. You lost George, but we had good quality and depth. I think the strikers were okay, me and Silve, but whenever Keel, Keel, you know what he gave every day in training. Uh, and every match, you, you know what you were going to get. Voxy was the super sub. Every time he came off the bench, you'd get a goal. You know, yeah. so I think uh, everyone kind of played their part. But that 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 four across the middle, you know, it was uh, that 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 never changed too much. You know, you only missed probably the odd game here or there, but you'd come straight back in once you once see that he's were, were fully fit. So I think that put us yeah. in good stead because you knew exactly what you were going to get. And the thing is, the, the other teams knew as well. So even when they started parking the bus and shutting up shop. We just we had we had that ability that we could go direct. We we pick up second balls when we got into the final third. You know the final third entries from both both of yourselves, David Jones supporting Carl, just kind of uh, hovering, doing his defensive duties. But it was just we were hard to play with, and then you've got the likes of fullbacks bombing down either side of you as well. So I think we just we had we had so many so many options, but it was uh, it was consistency as well. You know I think it was a a great group. We we knew we knew very early doors that that there was a possibility that we could go on and achieve that, and I think we never bottled it, and that's something that that you know what it says a lot about the character. And I remember saying that to the gaffer after the season was done. You know that we sat top of the table from what was it the last was it the last week in September was it? You know, and we stayed there all the while. I know we had a little kind of dodgy period through the Christmas bit. I think we won one in thirteen, but I think we stayed top because we'd done that. We'd done that, that that enough that I think Redden had came joint on points with us after that little blip. Yeah. But it was uh, enough done. Right, we're back at we're back at we're back for the second half. We're still recording. Honestly, uh, we had such a nightmare there, everybody, trying to skip ahead through half time. Unfortunately, Michael Kiteley and Matt Jarvis have been forced to listen to us bickering like a, a married couple. You can talk us through this, Mikey. Commentary style, please. This could we win the back, the ball back straight away? So, so goal. They've taken the uh, kick off. As you can tell it's been ages since I've commentated. Here comes Big Looms. There's a foul. Oh, shanked <laughs> on the outside of his right foot. It's never been a foul, but Morgan's got to be better. He's got to be stronger there, hasn't he? Surely. That's awful. <laughs> awful. <laughs> Honestly, Kites, back me up on this, right? Looms fouled a lot, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yes. What am I hearing? It, 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 yeah, he used to get his, it, it, he used to get his arm in, but that's that was his job, wasn't it? That was his job. Jarvo. Big strong, big strong centre forward. You gotta gotta make sure if the defender heads it, it doesn't go very far. Yeah. Exactly, Jarvo. What's Michael talking about? <laughs> yeah. Michael K- kites by the way there. Yeah, he did for a little lot. Bloody. Hell. <laughs> he, used to, he used to like a little grapple, didn't he? Have you, loved it, mate. Boys, have you seen have you seen when Looms puts those little um, compilations on his social media of all his goals and they're just all fouls? <laughs> that's all that's all I get from me. I, I post something and he'll just say foul, foul, foul. You know what I mean? He needs to turn the page a little bit to be fair. Let's get that repetitious now. <laughs> to be fair, Mikey, you said I scored a lot of tackles <laughs> in this game. Still got you though, hasn't it? It's still got you. It's still annoying you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <hurt> me that. <laughs> Even though he's pinged one in the top corner from 20 yards in this game, it was the first thing you said when we talked about it. <laughs> it was a celebration, though, okay, Kites, wasn't it? In this one, I know uh, it's got abused, didn't it? That one. <laughs> don't know, don't know Guys, what see, see uh, TC would TC, you know, would he watch through certain little clippets with you? He done that with 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 everyone. Was that something that he he done with yourselves as well? Yeah, negatives. TC was good at that, and he used, to, he used to work at me coming in on my left and shooting with my left foot, and that's obviously the second goal comes from that. So yeah, he, he did work hard, TC, with all the lads. I know he used to do a lot with Java as well, um, and he, he was brilliant for us, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was class. He used to take everyone out. Each individual, if someone you know 
like for instance me he would work on crossing or cutting side and shooting same for you on the other side he used to work with like Edo you arriving in a box because that was one of his massive things that Edo always used to be in the, the right time entering the box and getting on the end of crosses it was it was an art but it wasn't something that it just happened he used to work with it and that was TC again just helping doing little bits and pieces before training sessions all the time and and the thing is TC absolutely loved it it wasn't like it yeah, we were, he was like, oh, I've got to go and do this. He absolutely loved it. He was like, come on, let's go out and do this. Come on, let's And you'd be like, oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, let's go, let's go. Yeah, you sort of fed off his energy, didn't you? Yeah. Um, boys, just before we let you go, because we've had you on for quite a while, um, just kind of where does this game and this season, I guess, rank in your Wolves' memories? Michael Kitely? For, for me, this, this game... Is the best game that I've ever played in. Um, I think to for every wow, that's a big play, statement. Massive, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just just because I think every every player just played so well. There wasn't one player that was a was even a seven out of ten. I think everyone was sort of you know an eight nine out of ten, and that's why we just blew blew Forest away. And then for the season, obviously to to get promoted, I've been there a couple of years. We've knocked on the door a couple of times of, of the playoffs and to go that one step further and to win the league with with a great bunch of lads for me is just the uh, it's the best season of, of my career um, without a doubt I don't really know how I can follow that to be honest <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I would totally agree with um, uh, there's nothing better than winning trophies and having a successful season so um, that season is is probably the best season um, for a for a full a full season. You know the group of lads and the the achievement that we did and the way that we won the league. I think is is the best season that I, I've enjoyed. I suppose um, the game is just. It, if you'd asked me to pick out a game for Wolves, that would be the one that automatically comes into my head. I think it's because of how many times I've uh, been spoke about with Looms about him running in the opposite direction. But, <laughs> <laughs> but also, because of like Kite said, I think the, the perform- that first half is the best performance of a team I think you go, you'll ever see. It is, it is incredible. Um, just before you go, feels a little bit like, kind of, do you remember Silla Black, surprise, surprise? It's like friends reunited. I'm going to reunite you with someone who's across the pond now. Hello, Kevin Foley. <laughs> All right, lads. <laughs> yes, so thank you. All right, Jarvo Kite. How are you doing, mate? Good, mate. Good to hear from you, boys. Um, yes. Yeah, really good. How are you yeah. coping over there? Yeah, fine, fine. It's like it's like I'm on one long holiday, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yes, I'll be honest. The sun's out. The sun's out. The kids are in a swim pool every day doing a bit homeschooling um, but all in all seriousness like it it was tough because we we had just started the season we won our first game at New York Red Bulls and then um, obviously this happened but you know it is what it is and everyone's in the same boat and we just got to try and stay safe and um, just just do the best we can. Foles you've just been hearing the boys talking about TC and the work that Terry Connor did with them you're now the TC to Neil Collins what's that like? Uh, <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's. Um, I'm, I actually. I, I. I love that sort of stuff. Getting players individually in twos and threes, and and start coming up with like little drills, um, whether it's for defenders or midfielders, full backs. Um, it's great when you can like sort of do one on one stuff. And obviously, I, I got to practice a lot in the academy while I was at Wolves for a couple of years. Um, really enjoyed that. But um, I've got to say, I much prefer doing it like with with full on a professional team um, you know because there's sometimes there's more on the line and um, you, you're trying to you're trying to make things fresh all the time for, for the lads you don't you don't want it to be boring you want to you, I, I sort of think of it if I was a player now would I, would I enjoy doing this drill um, and would I be getting enough out of it and that's that's how I look at it well listen you know like if you need a winger at any point yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure Jarvo might be available soon Mate, are you still are you still playing, Trevor? What's going on? I'm are you, are you am, available? Okay. I'm still playing, mate. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see if yeah. the planes are still working. Get you on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Jarvis, you need a long holiday as well, mate. Get yourself over there. <laughs> What's happening? Pause. Are they are they just voiding the season because it's only one game in then, or what? No, I don't really know. I think 
they put it on hold for a month for now. I think they're extending it again. And obviously we've got an East conference and a West conference. Yeah. There's talk of maybe doing um, a central conference as well. So you cut the games down. So instead of having like 18 teams in each league, there might be more like 10 or 11. Um, so but the, the thing- cross win then cancelled then doesn't it if it does that Possi- possibly but it's still so up in the air no one knows what's going on it's like everywhere really um, so you know the lads are still doing their individual training you don't want to hammer them too much with like all sessions and that because after three weeks it's getting boring now and you just got to, you just got to, when we do all get back together hopefully we'll have a couple of weeks just to get get the fitness back up and then so we can go again um, before Loom's interrupted we were about to get Matt Jarvis a move to America Oh, hang on, there's the own goal. <laughs> Steers is nowhere near it. That's not, how has that been credited to Steers? That's ridiculous. Explain yourself, Kevin. I knew this was coming. So basically, <laughs> I can't see what you're seeing, but I'm, I believe I'm marking someone in and around where Wayne Hennessy is. And um, I'm sort of trying to block the guy. And Wayne, I think he's come to punch it or something and he's just flapped at it and he's just hit me in the face and just dropped down into the goal and I thought, oh no, own goal, don't want that on my CV. Um, and then, so I'm thinking, terrible. And then the next day I wake up, get the paper, news of the world and all that. Steer my own goal. I was buzzing. He was so, <laughs> he was devastated. And he still, he still speaks about, he, speaks, he still speaks about it to this day. <laughs> he wasn't happy he wasn't happy earlier when we had him brilliant. 20 minutes ago. he wasn't happy with you Kev. oh really really he sorry Steve he kept it silent for about 10 years <laughs> yeah, he is nowhere near it you just got to get out of there get out of the picture like <laughs> his big long head was in it I think that <laughs> um, as I was saying we are I mean Kites you're going to at some point I'm sure you've told me that you'd like to be an agent in the future so you get registered, you can do the paperwork, Foles gets Java over there, I'll take a cut of the fee, everyone's happy. <laughs> everyone's a winner. Happy, happy days. Win. Yeah, yeah. Happy days. It. <laughs> Love it. Let's get it done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know we're going to put this out, so th- this is like a verbal contract to get this move sorted. <laughs> yeah, can we get Brilliant. Neely on the line? Get Neely. He's got the final say. Listen, I'll, yeah. listen. I'll do all I can for you, Jarvis, you know. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, too. Thanks, too. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Kites, Jarvo, thank you very much indeed for your time. Always great to speak to you. No worries. Brilliant. No worries. Enjoyed it. No, see you, boys. Take care. You all. Have a good one, later. Yeah, and juice. Bye-bye. Michael Kiteley and Matt Jarvis joining us on this game. So, Looms, I've lost where we are. We're, what, 4-1 up at this point? Yeah, 4-1 up. As I say, in in control, we've just conceded there, but again against the run of play. I think just without the ball, we've still got high energy at the minute. Obviously, he's controlling the match, uh, and like you say, what even even fullbacks are still bombing forward. So I say, Kites. What Foles was bombing forwards? Yeah, this hey, of course. So, hey. so I'm come for you, Kev. This I'm is not. part of your game, mate. The, the amount of goals that you created for me, mate. No, Mikey, mate. Come on, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> In this match, the Kites gets another goal, right? But I, I get studs down my back from the goalkeeper. I, I he makes a great save, and then I rebound. He makes a great save from I think a header from me, and then it comes up and he completely smashes me and he two foots me right down my back. So I've got stud marks from both his boots all the way right down. It was a sore one. Oh, mate, I remember it, that. Is this hard at this stage of a game, boys, when you've just come out from half-time, you've got a massive lead? Psychologically, you must be thinking, game's won here. We don't really need to go back up through the gears, or do you? Uh, well, I'm sure. I can't really remember the half-time team talk, but it would be, listen, lads, we take nothing for granted. We're going out, it's nil-nil again, and we go again. We don't, we don't just rest on a 4-0. Um, and then... <clears throat> Obviously, it's great to get the fifth soon after half time. Um, but we wouldn't we wouldn't have been coming out thinking, oh, this is going to be easy because because of the type of lads that we were. We we still wanted to get the job done properly. Well, I'm sure you did look at me at, at half time, Kev, and say well, it's going to be a good night tonight. I'm sure <laughs> that professional <laughs> yeah. head of yours was on. Yeah, maybe we did have a night out plan, didn't we? An unbelievable night, and um, to be four nil up before half time knowing that you're going out with the lads that night I don't think there's a better there's a better combination is there Loons? Nah you're spot on mate you're spot yeah. on 
but I think yeah. Mick the gaffer said what he had to say and then we obviously had our own little uh, little little talk it was like you say you like, just go out you can enjoy the, you can enjoy the game you're 4 nil up yeah. but you still don't want to concede you know you've got you've got the crazy the crazy Scotsman at the back that got angry and aggressive when, when, when anyone made a mistake or you know and that was all, all, all well, around are, you ta- are you talking about his manager now? his manager yeah I just want to try to suck him in there I'd send nearly the, the recording of it but he's, uh, <laughs> he, he never took the bait <laughs> yeah. what is Neil yeah. like is he different to as he was as a player um, no he's, he's pretty because as a player he was full on like he wanted to win um, wanted to win in training wanted to win everything like and he's the same it's the same personality um, very like really very well organised in terms of sessions in terms of how he speaks to people it's honestly it's like he's been doing it for years um, and I, I've learnt a lot off him obviously because he transitioned to being a manager not even two years ago um, so I, I'm still sort of in that very early stages obviously coming from an academy but um, really well organised um, probably calmer than you might think Looms you know if you picture him on the training pitch and on the pitch he's, he's actually quite calm yeah. but when he you know he, like every manager you know you can you can lose your head sometimes but on the whole very calm and probably really really well organised that's what's, what, what's impressed me the most what do you call him? I just call him Neely um, and the lads because a lot of the lads have played with him in the team they they they, they, they in, in England it's all gaffer this gaffer, gaffer that but over here it doesn't seem to be it just seems to be nil it's, it's, it's strange because I, I did actually wonder how the lads are going to um, approach him especially the lads that have played with him but it's like just nil and okay and but they've got they've got huge respect for him as it looms, is, for the is, it, is it the law in English football that you have to call the manager gaffer no well, there's, there's all different names you know but Boss, I think yeah, boss, yeah. And I remember boss. Billy Davis. It was at Preston. He actually fined. He went from uh, I think it's assistant manager to manager, and he actually fined the players uh, if they called him uh, Billy. You know, so wow. uh, yeah, it's just the way it goes. You know, it's Pauls would definitely be calling him Billy if he was playing for him. <laughs> <laughs> you would, you've got to remember. If someone goes from assistant, the assistant manager is there yeah. to be kind of the bridge between the, yeah. the player and the manager. So he, he's got to be like a mate as well as that mm. kind of that, that a, a figure of authority. But you, you do you look, they'll be calling Kev Foles probably yeah Foles yeah. and then obviously speaking to the manager. Can I go speak to the gaffer or speak to Neil at this point? That's that's yeah. that's his job. But then if, if mm. Kev was then to become the manager, obviously it's a little bit more relaxed probably in America. Yeah, but assistant managers don't get called special titles, do they? Well, that's what I mean. They get called the name. That's 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 the hard thing. So from going from assistant manager to manager, then that's like Neely's went from player to manager. Neely's been ready to be a manager for the last ten years. I can guarantee it just from the way that he is. He'll have a little pad that he's he's light sessions. He he was on the ball. He was switched on. If you took if Mick McCarthy was to ask anyone then go take a session for his Neely be the one that would go and 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 and, and put. And put it, put it, to, put it through its work, and, and and do 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 it the way it has to be done, you know. So he has been ready for it, but you pick up little things. What the hardest thing for Neely would be how he talks to players, and that's why what Kev said there that he's really calm because you can't talk to a player like you're a player yourself. You're above that player. It's like talk with kids. You can't sit and argue with them because they're your kids. You're the authority figure. If you bring yourself down to their level, then there's that. That's not right. So here's a goal. Oh, <laughs> it's just a little fade. That's been the left as well. So they talk about what what TC works with them, and it is it's TC done that way with, with, with all the players, you know. And it's like the work got put in, and then you go and do it on on, on the Saturday. So yeah. it was, uh, was that a curl? Did he curl that one in? Or was that his first into, one? Into the top, the top, yeah. the keeper's top right hand corner. Well, top. What are you saying to him, Aliens? You always have a big cuddle with him. I had a, like I say, I was like. Uh, I, I don't know. I, enjoy, I enjoyed. I enjoyed. I just enjoyed every moment, you know. So all the lads, you know, you had your little, your little bond with them. You know, Is that falls at the top of the picture? Couldn't be bothered to run and celebrate. Hold on, I've probably just overlapped him. <laughs> you, 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 did, you, you, you took a man away, him. so he allowed him to decoy. cut in. The amount of decoys I gave that kid. Honestly, we we uh, we played. I remember we played at Blackpool away, 
and I've made about five overlapping runs and he just wouldn't give me the ball. And then they're coming at half time. <laughs> the gaffer's gone to me, Foles, are you gonna ask for the ball? And I was like, gaffer, five times I've asked for it and he's not giving it to me. And coach was like, yeah, to be fair, gaffer, I just, I just keep going myself. I don't want to give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't mind. Like if, if I make the run and it creates an opening for him to go inside, I, I didn't mind that. But after the fourth one, I'm thinking, well, at least pass me one of them. <laughs> Yeah. That's the difference. See what Kev just said there. He didn't mind. So five runs, five overlaps. He broke his neck to get there, and he didn't mind if it if it created something for the team. That was the mindset of all the players. They put them they put, they put themselves second to the team, you know. And that's and it is. It's just that it, it was just it was just normal for us, you know. I I take a hit knowing that it would it would the, the ball would, would would fall to one of us, you know. David Jones would. Would, uh, would would do the tackle. He would he would work. He would drop in and follow Henry's man if Henry was out of position. It was just something that happened naturally because the team came first. By the way, uh, we just missed another foul from Looms. If anyone is doing a tally as I am at home, oh, you got a tally. You're gonna send me this it's, uh, 17 so far in the game. Well, that's not bad. It's <laughs> not bad. We've only played an hour. Did you, no did way. you put the, the time slot bes- beside them so I can go and... Is, is that not a foul on me there then, Mikey? Oh, God. Right. Counting the ones in. Falls, right. we, yeah. in our previous episode of this, we watched back the game against Cardiff from two years ago and Looms claimed that he'd scored from a wider position than Leo Bonatini hit the post. And I said, no way. You'll remember it. It's the one away at Sheffield United. Sheffield United. Yeah, when he's... Yeah, right, Kev, can I just say something? If you look at the ball, right, so the ball for Leo and myself, the ball's probably the same distance. No, it's not. Line. It's miles so, different. No, listen to me. From the goal <laughs> line, Mikey, not the sideline, the goal line. Let's put it this way. Leo, he, he was facing the goal. There was no one in goals. He hits the near post. Oh, I'm stairs, what away. a tackle. I'm, yeah. running, I'm running away from goal. I'm running away from goal, Michael. Basically, basically, falls right. I'll send you the photo evidence. Yeah. In fact, I'll do it now while we're talking, because right. Looms great. Looms sent me the pictures right, thinking that this was going to save him. I just sent you the video. I sent you the video, the video and I did freeze frame on the pictures. How busy is that, falls? That's that's how much time he's. I know we're in isolation, <laughs> but come on, that's just taking the biscuit, isn't it? Send it through, Marky. Hang on, I go scroll back through a load of photos. Andy Q and Dave Edwards coming on. Oh, so getting taken off. Oof. Oh. Wait, and, and Andy Cole oh, comes he's having a wee feel of the calf. Mick, Mick, Is see that in the pit. Mick and Solve having a chat. Obviously, Solve, Mick's got to explain himself why he took him off, and then Solve had a wee feel of the calf. And Jarvo. Jarvo has the, had the perfect game. Edo coming on. Do you know so what? Kites is swapping how, how over. See, Kites has gone over to the left. How early in the season was this? Um, this was this the end of August. International, yeah. 30th of August. Break, yeah. Oh, okay. Wow, I've just got the pictures through, Mikey. So, Bonatini hits the post from there? Yeah. The near post, yeah. Okay. Well, Lucy, you your chance is easier. <laughs> My chance is easier? Because like, you're basically on just... six yard sideline thing. Right, shall I send you the video then? We'll see who's chances No, <laughs> what do you mean? The video makes no difference. That's a freeze frame from the video. The video actually shows me not falling down for what would have been a penalty, getting my balance, taking it around Paddy Kenny, as I'm going away from goal, slotting it in from that angle. Boom. Bonatini's face up, facing at the goal. And he should just pass that through, pass it into the middle of the goal. He gave everyone the eyes, which was an excellent bit of skill, but put it in the back of the net. This is it. Watch Oh, come on, Kyo. Oh. That's what I did. Just put it back in the put it back in the, the danger zone. Here comes Foley. Oh, that's a nice little layoff. Jones, excellent ball in. Uwaluma misjudged it, got underneath it. I was underneath it, mate. It was not, not the best ball in, was it? It was a great ball in. Yeah, it's, he's got to look up, get his head up. Oh, Kite's got Ooh, absolutely Kite's wiped too. out. Did he? Was football a bit? Oh, sorry. Was football a bit different? I mean, I, and you know, it's weird because we always think like this. But like, were you allowed to get away with a bit more at this point than you would be now? So, um, Arsenal, yeah. There's eyes everywhere. There's eyes everywhere now. You know, I think uh, 
but it's, I think it's a lot down to the the ref the referee. I think I always spoke to all the referees. We, we obviously with a bit of respect, try and kind of make them off, make sure you knew their names, and you got away with a lot more. You know, I remember I, I remember I, I broke uh, Alex Bruce's nose at, at Leeds away when I was at Watford, and the referee gave me the free kick, but he's actually walking to me laughing, wow. saying he's head butted your arm, he's head butted your arm. <laughs> it's just because of the relationship I had with the referees, you got, I, I got away with a lot more, you know, because I was a physical player, I enjoyed it when a defender was manhandling you and things like that and trying to, you knew where he was. I struggled against the proper football and centre backs that would that would make sure that they would they would back off you. You couldn't feel where they were. That's when I really struggled, you know. So, so no, it's uh, but you do you get a, you used to get away with a lot more the the challenges going in and even even the players themselves, you know. But I, I never say about the diving situation. Contact's contact. It doesn't matter how, how little it is. If a player, if it's contact and it would be a free kick, if a player has to go down to get the referee's attention, it's not diving in my eyes. I don't know what your thoughts on that is. The referee, I hate that. Oh, he's, he's oh, good honest lad. He stayed on his feet there. It's a foul still. It should be it should be pulled back for a penalty kick anyway if it's in the box. I, I, I just don't like that. And that's why players go to ground because they feel contact. It is a foul. It would, they would get it anywhere else in the pitch because it's in the box. The, the referees don't give it. That's why players go to ground a little bit easier in there. It's still a penalty kick. It's contact. Anyway, Foles as a defender yeah. probably thinks differently. Um. No, I mean, I, 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 I don't like the, the thing. I hate most is when I see a player um, just rolling around on the floor. Like you're 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 a grown man, okay, oh. and you're rolling around. It looks stupid. Like if if you put them lads into a game of rugby and they got smashed, or you watch rugby players get smashed, they're not going to roll around crying. They're going to get up. They're just going to take it. So, and I, I see a lot of kids nowadays as well. And I, I, I go to obviously my boy plays in, in teams, and these kids now they they all dive around on the floor and they roll around and because they see it on YouTube every day, they see it on TV and. Yeah. I, I, I think it sometimes it sends out the wrong signals. But like with VAR nowadays, you're not uh, professionals aren't going to get away with dives. Foles, we've just seen another really sweet move where Carl Henry brought it down. Dave Jones, first time out to you. You've slid it in, slid it in through to I think Keo. Yeah. Um, like we were talking with Dave Jones and Carl Henry earlier about whether you feel like this team didn't get the credit it deserves sometimes for the style of play that you played um, yeah I mean we, I think we had a bit of everything we had we could we could press teams because we had energy um, we could we could hit the channels and go long because we had the runners to, to get on the end of the balls um, but we could play as well honestly we could we could play when we wanted to and um, I think that was the great thing about the team where we weren't just you know a footballing team we weren't just a long ball team we, we had a bit of everything and then probably one of our biggest assets was off the ball as well when when we didn't have the ball what we were, what we were like closing teams down and I think we used to thrive off that even in our training sessions like we if we're doing a closing down session honestly you, you sometimes you couldn't wait to be the team trying to chase to get the ball because <laughs> honestly like you, you get after it and like your teammates backing you up go on go on you, you get there you've got it and then he skips past you but then the next one smashes him and you think yes we got it you know it just uh, it breeds confidence and I used to love going into games as well and the first minute where we're, we're tight to each player if I'm playing against a left winger and he gets it into feet and I'm tight and I'm up behind him Carl's coming in front of him winning the ball and it's like that, that lays down a marker for me a lot of the times in games and Teams, teams, all of a sudden realise, wow, the, these boys are on it today, and thankfully, you know, that season it, that that happened a lot for us. I think looking so, at yeah. that, you know, what Kev's saying there, we actually did enjoy that. You know, when you knew that the gaffer would say, right, allow this player to have it. So you know that you're you're pressing and you're pressing organised press as well. You knew what you had. You knew you had the pace. You knew you had the energy. And it's just like that little test. Let's see. Let's see if they can play out of this. Let's see if they can play out of this. And then as soon as we got it, then we knew it just came naturally to us anyway. But without yeah. it, I thought without the ball, we had energy. We had pace. We were organised. Uh, and saying that as well, we yeah we we had goals that came from all over. You know, it wasn't just. 
the strikers, goals came from all over, even in, 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 the, in some real difficult games, it would be Jody Craddock or Neil Collins or Steele stepping up with, with that with that vital goal, you know, and that's, that's even Kev, you, was it Barnsley? Barnsley, yeah. before the Christmas do you got, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying, you know, it's like we, we need a win, it's a Christmas do, it was freezing cold, who steps yeah. up with the goal, Mr Foles himself? Didn't get many, but when he did, important goals. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. Honestly, I wish I'd scored more goals. Um, that feeling, that feeling you must have got, Looms, obviously scoring over 100 goals. Um, when it hits the back of the net, it's a surreal feeling because, like, everyone, everyone's, you know, everyone in the ground is looking at you then. You know, obviously, it didn't happen a lot for me, but when it did, it was, um, it, was a re- it was a really great feeling to have. Did that ever did that ever wear off on you, Looms, or did you have a great no, feeling every time you scored? It was it was the same. It was, there's nothing better, and for me, there's nothing better in football than, than scoring goals. The hardest thing to do, as I say to to Mikey all the time when we do the commentary. The thing that kind of that threw me is like when you look at defenders, uh, you know how because they are these are a, a different breed. You know, defenders right across across the back four. It was like. Uh, goal line clearances would they would celebrate it like it was a goal. Uh, yeah. And it's like Neil was one of the worst. Neil and it's 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 bizarre. You know, it's like how 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 they would react to keeping a clean sheet. They'd come in and yeah. it would oh it was you know yeah. so for me the hardest thing to do in football but as a defender I under, I do get it. The responsibility is to protect your goalkeeper, protect yeah. the goal and when you come in with a clean sheet that box was ticked. But you scored goals and weighing that up to having a, a, a clear a, a goal line clearance there, there is only one winner to me but you've got to answer that for yourself Kev oh scoring goals listen I used to be a striker when I was nine so. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was a midfielder and then I got put into full back when I was um, put, playing in the Luton reserve team and then actually really loved it there and then I thrived there but, how, uh, how did you go from striker to full back I think every footballer starts off as a striker well most of them anyway and um I don't know, and then I just probably wasn't, I was really quick when I was younger, then people caught up with me, then I started playing in midfield, getting on the ball, up oh. to, to, to about the youth team. What's happened there, Loons? Yeah, it's... it's, it's oh, yeah, this it's, allowed for handball? It's, it's, it's it's, yeah, it's never been a handball. Look at me, this is me talking to the ref here, so it's never been a handball. So, I, I, it's, it, he had, Dave Edwards has reacted well, it's bounced in his path and he's just smashed it in. And this is what, that's what Edo done. He, oh, he worked Edo. on it. He just arrived in the box at the right time more often than not didn't he yeah he he, he like I heard you talking to the lads there earlier about t- TC sessions, sessions he used to be out there all the time finishing and Edo's finishing was fantastic like he was like the championship version of Lampard arriving in the box um, doing finishing from outside the box um, and it mate he, he improved so much at it and he continued to score goals throughout his, his career and obviously he's still playing now at, at a good level you put that down to the competition, Kev. You know because at the end of the day, you think about it. You have to, you have to make sure that the gaffer and TC see yeah. you doing all that extra. Because yeah, I know nothing was set in stone, but you're looking at Carl Henry and David Jones in there, and when yeah. Edel got the opportunity, he did, he did really well. But you have to, you know, it's like you look at the, you look at the likes of Andy Keogh and and and, and Voxy. Yeah. As well, I know Definitely. it wasn't set in stone, and the, the gaffer did mix it. Voxy started a couple of games, Andy Keogh came in and started quite a few games and sc- scored some very important goals. Yeah, they had. I remember, I remember when before Palace and, and the gaffer dropped me, I was raging. I hadn't scored in three games, and he just said to me, he "says when it, when, when else can I put Andy Keogh in? Because he's yeah. he, he was he was up there in training every day." And yeah. If, if you never rotated the strikers, you can't be reliant. Silva was going to get obviously more games without goals or bad performances because he had that key in him that he could unlock and score that wonder goal, that that important goal. Whereas I think that Keo, Keo with myself, Keo with Silva, Keo with Voxy, Keo could work with all of those players. Yeah. Whereas me and Silva connected well, but then me and Voxy, but well, that very light for light. Folks, she's taken that to another level yeah. nowadays. But it was just, it was that that competition that you had to show the manager that you were on this on the right page. Yeah, I think it was down to the individual as well. Like, obviously, you can have that competition, but you you have to have that desire to do it. And like, Edo definitely had that desire to want to improve all the time. And 
uh, as did all the players. Honestly, I, I remember playing with um, Tosh. Um, sorry, Voxy, Toshak, young Toshak, and um, he was like. You'll have to explain old, that in a minute. Yeah, he did. He was like an old head on young shoulders. Yeah. Um, he was. I, I really enjoyed playing with him. Like similar to you, Looms, I, I knew I could play the ball into him from like 30, 40 yards. Um, and he'd get it under control and he'd have the strength to hold off the defenders. And it, yeah. once you can get the ball into a striker from the fullback area or from deep and they can hold it up, then you know, like, um, you know, we've got a chance here of, of creating a counter attack. Um, Mickey Gray's just come on. He appears to have gone to the same hairdressers as Steers and Andy Keogh for this game. <laughs> Wow. What is going on here? Is it bleached? Yeah, bleached. Bouffanted. Uh, Mulleted. A, yeah, a mullet. That's what I was going to say. Have you been watching um, The Lion King on Netflix? Tiger King. No, Tiger I've not, King. I've not started it yet. The Lion King. What am I on about? Tiger I've King. seen The Lion King. So, please. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Lion King. Right, Tiger King. Right, Joe. What's his name? Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic, Joe Exotic mate. Yeah. He's got a mullet, right? And I tell you what, there's a few lads in the team now in that Forest game that have got a Joe Exotic mullet. All they're missing have... is the tash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Why did you not, not have bleached hair? Because I would have looked horrific. I looked bad. Yeah, but so do the other lads, but they still did it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't... Do you know what? I'm contemplating now getting a skin then. And um, I've never had one. My missus won't let me. Actually, this is the time to do it, mate, when you're not That's what anywhere. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'll do it myself. I do it every other day, mate. I get the bick out. Not skinny. Fair play. Fair play. Mikey's trying to get me to grow my hair in this isolation period, but that's it's not going to happen. You did it a little bit the other day. Well, the other, the other week, yeah, but I've got to... It's like, it's still, I've got to, I've got to look okay for the, for the missus, haven't I? She can't have me looking like a... <sighs> Rag ass rover, can't you? The braids. Bring back the braids, Looms. Oh, oh that's a terrible pass for me there. You could grow a big beard. I can't grow a beard like yours, Mickey. I've, if I could, I would. And I'd have it. Just imagine me with a big massive beard and a skinhead. Oh, I think I'd, I think I'd enjoy that. Kevin Foley, you're not getting beaten a one on one, mate. What's Martin doing? What Who's is doing Martin it? Doing? Uh, he's he's he just came to me, you showed him, he, he, he tried to, he done a little step over, you, you showed him to the left, yeah. and then you showed him to the right, and then he took it to the right, you just went, oh. body in between ball and man, and then you just turned out and passed it out, nonchalantly. Oh. Nonchalant. Mate, I, oh, I used to love them days. <laughs> I used to love it, honestly. <laughs> honestly. There was no better feeling than that. Um, players come to take you one on one, and well, honestly, sometimes you could win the ball without actually tackling them, because... Like you, did, you say, you just you, you just get your body you get your body in the way. I used to hate I used to I used to hate diving in. I used to hate diving in um, on players. I used to try and stay on my feet as much as I could. And sometimes I say, I say this to players nowadays, like it's it's harder to stay on your feet and not commit because once you commit, that's it. You're you've either won it or you lost it. They're going past yeah. you or you've won it. But to stay on your yeah. feet, sometimes you've got to stay on your feet 10, 15 seconds. And um, it, it can be hard on the legs, but you know when you win it, it's, it's a great feeling. Um, just before we let you go, Foles, because I can yeah. hear your kids are now desperate for your attention. We've kept you long oh. enough. Um, I've got the match report from the Birmingham Mail from the time. Um, bearing in mind that you won five one, what do you yeah. reckon you got given out of ten? Uh, oh, so <laughs> well, they didn't know I scored an own goal. Hopefully, so that keeps me a mark. Um, that game I felt like I had a good game I can't really remember I'll go for an 8 you got a 7 oh ok yeah, I'll they're not that. even there they don't even go do they yeah but bearing in mind bearing in mind that he's, he got credited with an own goal Steer's got a 9 for this game he but he scored an own goal <laughs> yeah <laughs> otherwise surely that would he would have had a 10 out of 10 that's brilliant Good, uh, what did I get? Uh, you got an eight. So, hang on, just watching this attack. So, is that Keo? This is Keo. Kate's on the, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Gray on the ball now. 
Oh, come on, Michael. He's a little unit, isn't he? Should be getting pushed off the ball at like that. Won't be happy with that. Um, Who got man of the match in that? Kitely. Kites, yeah. Uh, Kitely got nine. Decent. What, same as Steels? Yeah, and there's one other player who got a nine, according to the Birmingham mouth this game. Jarvo. Nope. Dave Jones. Nope. Yeah. They've both got eight. He banked Blake. This is, this oh, Looms! Oh, have you missed? Look at my back. Do you see it? Oh, you have to rewind that. You have to rewind that. No oh. way. How have you missed that? Well, I never missed me. It's a save. Yeah, you've, you've got, got to finish you've there. Got you've got to score there. If that was anybody else, you would be giving them pelters for missing Andy, from there. Andy Keogh yeah. chips the ball up. I hit yeah. it. Head the ball with power towards goal. The keeper slap bang centre of goal, six yards out falls. Great save, great wow. save. Wow! But then, did you watch his his boot go down my back right at the end? I'm in bits. <laughs> I'm in absolute bits. Crying for a foul again, Looms. Me, I, I, my back was in bits. I remember it. Stud marks. Look at me. I'm feeling it now. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. My back hurting so much. <laughs> uh, honestly, if you if if this was, if we were watching another year, and somebody else had missed that, you'd be going. He's got to do better. He's got to do better there. He's got to yeah. the big man. Well, I agree, but like. Oh say, no! He should have scored there. Yeah, that one as well, Kev. Oh, balls! You know when there was a long ball, you yeah. just judge. You judge it. You'd stand behind the player, and yeah. he would jump, but you would just then pick up the. The ball that bounced behind you. I don't know how you've got a seven and he's got an eight in this game, Falls. Yeah, Unbelievable. I don't know. Are you talking about me here, Austin? <laughs> <laughs> um, who you haven't you haven't come up with who else got a nine according to the Birmingham oh. Mail? Oh wow, okay. Let me look at the line up. I've got it on my phone here. Oh uh Is it Wardy? Wardy? Uh no, Wardy got um an eight. Nice. Well, you never, you never actually see what Silv had. So if Silv's got a nine, then it is. It's, a it's not Silvan. Silvan got seven. Who can it be then? Henry. Yep. Henry. Henry. Got a nine, did he? Carl Henry got a nine. Where's Wayne Hennessy got a seven, and I've not seen him touch the ball in this game. Unbelievable. Just goal kicks, wasn't it? A apart from palming it onto Foles for the own goal. Yeah. Um, did he palm it or did he punch it? Looked a little Flapped bit. It. Yeah. Flapped, Flapped yeah. it. Yeah. Um, Foley 7 Stearman 9 Collins 8 Ward 8 Kitely 9 Man of the match uh, Jones 8 Henry 9 Jarvis 8 Edwards got a 6 Even though he came on as a sub Feels harsh Yeah uh, Iwalumo 8 Ebanks Blake 7 And Keo got a 6 as well I don't know why People give scores to subs in, Especially in this situation yeah. What do you expect them to do? I don't know <coughs> So basically score, me and Seal Were the do. worst players and Wayne Hennessy. And Wayne, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you did score a long walk, Kev. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> honestly, never mind. Um, honestly, mate, it's been brilliant to have you on. We miss you over this side. Yeah, I miss you too, boy. I miss the odd uh, sighting of Mikey down the um, training ground, doing his interviews, and obviously seeing looms around. I still got Sky Sports over here, so I was, I was seeing your looms out and about, but obviously football stopped now, so I don't know. And I'll be seeing you next, but hopefully it won't yeah, be long. Yeah. We'll get there, yeah, hopefully, mate. Just make sure you and the family stay safe. Yes, right, we'll do. We'll do, boys. How long is the, uh, the American adventure planned for? Um, well, it was a two-year contract. Um, and then, yeah, we just, we just, listen, we just decided to go for it as a family. You don't get many opportunities like this. And, um, you know, the kids are in school and I'm enjoying coaching. So who knows where, where it may lead to. What about what about the coaching qualifications? Are you getting put through some some while you're there as well? Any? Um, that could be an option. Yeah, um, oh. I've, I've, done, I've done my A and B license while I was still playing in the UK. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and I think that there is American versions of of the same thing. So, that could definitely be an option. Right. Got you. Um, Listen, but, mate. Uh, yeah, go on. We'll let you get back to your family because we can hear them yeah. in the background. We've had you for way too yeah. long. I'm Stay sure. safe, my friend. Look after yeah. yourselves. See you, boys. Nice to speak to you. Top man. See you later. Kevin. Cheers. Cheers, right. Foles. Kevin Foley. Love that guy. <laughs> Absolute legend of a man. You know, it's, it's one of them, you know, I think straight away you, you can, you, you heard the, the boys, just their, their mood lift when he comes on the, fo on the phone. You know, he's, he had the respect to everyone, but he's got a kind of little bit of banter 
a little bit kind of dry humour that uh, that everyone enjoyed. His name's come up quite a few times in the old goal club, you know, funniest player in the dressing room and things. So it's uh, he is just one of the genuine good guys. <laughs> well, he destroyed you on our Christmas special this year. He destroyed them. when we were talking about um, which uh, celebrity program you were going on telly. <coughs> oh yeah, well that's when he started talking about his five pen sweeties as well. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I got the better of him on there. It's out there, everybody. Old Gold Club, powered by Blythe Group. Our past episodes are available uh, in all your favourite podcast places. There have been actually, you know, we've done episodes with I think everybody apart from Dave Jones who's come on and spoke to us today and he was due to do one until this whole coronavirus COVID-19 thing kicked in. Um, well, you have to pass me uh, Jonah's, Jonah's number. I've lost lost touch with him, but what a, what a guy. Just uh, again, just another, another... It was a great group, to be fair. I know you've kept in touch with everyone over the years, but me and Jonah kind of fell away a little bit, which is it's just sad to see. Well, it's, it's that thing, isn't it? Because there are, I mean, there are. You've spread around a little bit. Obviously, Foles came back to the club. Um, Kites has come back to the area. You know, I've got Jarvo back to do games and stuff. But you know, there's still a few lads who are still playing, which is the surprising thing. I, I forgot to say to Steers. You know, he was actually really young at this point. Yeah, yeah, he was. He, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't tell by the way that he kind of held himself you know confident you know the way that he played his football you said already it was in his makeup to do these little mm. turns and things it's probably one of these things had Mick McCarthy pulling his hair out but he could defend you know he was he was a communicator an organiser you know so it was uh, and it was it was a makeup the, the whole group you know it was something that that everyone complimented each other and it, and it, and it kind of worked that balance was, was so important I think I used to love playing with Keo up top just the fact that he worked his socks off, you know, and, and at the end of it, he, he could play. You know, he would he made so many goals. He made two of my goals at uh, at, uh, at uh, away at Preston, the hat trick, just from just from his, his, his sheer persistence, his hard work, and then his quality at the end of it. You know, this has been a weird game, hasn't it? Since the fight, since the fifth it goal, always is. It's always gonna, it always dies down a little bit. That 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 goal, the second half. You know, if you think about it, we we drew the second half one one. But as a manager, you'd say, right, just don't go out and lose this half. So, job done, you know. But it's hard it's hard to kind of keep yourself going. It's it's basically you're just trying to, you're waiting for the referee to blow that final whistle now. It's game over. It should be game over uh, for nil anyway, but there has been some crazy things happening in football. Um, Not with the group that you had. It, it, might, it might be one of those things that's taboo, but do you talk to the centre-half who's marking you at this point? Are you having a conversation during the game? Are you taking the mickey? Uh, no, you, you wouldn't be taking the mickey because they're 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 they're, uh, they're under the, they're under the cosh, you know. They that that could switch very easy. But I have a good relationship with Morgan, uh, so you would have your little chat. But again, it's it's just all football, football based, you know. So Wes Morgan so. goes on to lift the Premier League. Yeah, he does. He does. We graduated together as well on that effective board member course as well. We were in the same uh, cohort there, so uh, so I know where as well. But it's uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. I remember this game, the second the at Forest, the Forest Ground. I lost my voice, uh, stretching my vocal cords in the before the game. So you know, I'm just doing my no- normal stretches in the in the in the in the bathroom, and I just can I just yawn and move my move my 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 my, my, my jaw. What and. Yeah, bizarre. I played the full game. I couldn't talk for three days. So I remember I went up to the dock and I had to kind of try and whisper in his ear. And he's, he thought I was taking the mickey before this, uh, before the, the the away match of this fixture, and I actually lost my voice. So, and it was me playing a full match without being able to talk. And I thought, oh my god, I've I've never found it so difficult. Couldn't communicate. Couldn't ask. Couldn't shout for the ball. It was just one of the one of the, and I think Kites. I think we won that game. Was it one 0 It was away. No, I think so. Kites got the goal, but I couldn't talk. So for three days I couldn't talk. But I just over. Hang on, you used to do vocal warm ups before games. No, not vocal, not vocal. Just my normal stretching. I just one. I, I place my my drink. I have a drink that I place on the second sink of every bathroom. That when I I'll come in, I'll drink my drink that's on my place, and then I'll walk in and I'll have my drink that's at the second sink. 
half time but before the match I'm putting my drink there and I was just open my mouth like just stretching my face or whatever washing my face and I just stretched I stretched my neck too much and my, I lost my voice my voice just completely went so I remember going to the doc before it saying I've lost my voice and he just says oh, we'll keep an eye on it but it, three days it took to get back to normal it's one of the weirdest superstitions I've ever heard no but I wasn't stretching my I was just putting my drink in place and I was having a stretch on my legs and yeah but then you put like a drink on the second mate, sink I, yeah, I wouldn't use I'd only use the uh, urinal the second the middle urinal the second one always the second one from what if there was only one well you use it don't you <laughs> well, yeah. I'd always use the second one if it was more than more than more than one bizarre still do that now why you're not playing? I don't know. I still do it now. When you go into somewhere, you'd always use the second one. Really bizarre. Um, I was having a little drink. Oh, Me, uh, about time he done something. To be fair, Wayne Hennessy, fantastic save. The reaction, feet, and that's it. it. Time up. That's pretty much his first real involvement <laughs> on 92 plus minutes. Nah, to be fair, it, it did. It was an absolute statement, wasn't it? I think there was a few of us that. He thought, right, it's a long way to go still, but, you know, putting Forrest to the sword the way that we did as well. And it's nice, you know, before the international break as well, you go away for whatever, 10 days, and you can just kind of think about, yeah, it's always nice having that that period in a win. But we, we went unbeaten for a while, and then I think we lost against Nor- Norwich away. And then we went, we, we can straight back onto the, the, the winning games again. So it's just, we, we had good character. Uh, but that that was a real statement to say we mean business. You know, I think we'd already beat Preston, who were the only un, unbeaten uh, unbeaten team as well. So I think this was uh, I'm just trying to think of the order of the game: Sheffield Wednesday, and was it Preston? Was it then this? And then that was the the early part. And then I think it was. Uh, I think this came off the back of Ipswich because this was the first game that Wardy plays properly at, at left back. Um, right, so this is this is first league game he plays left season. back anyway. Yeah, crazy. Um, I mean, so you know, I take the Mickey out of you. You know, I do it out of love. The, um, well, mostly out of love. <laughs> the, you played in this game. You played in this team. You were a big part of it. You heard some of the boys reference what they felt about this game and this team. What about you? Where does it rank for you? Yes, yeah, you know what? It's, it is. It's, it's definitely up there. I've there's there's games that mean you know Blackpool at home when I was captain for Wolves. That was that was a massive game for me. Uh, I got two goals on the day as well, but just for the fact that I was captain, you know, I think uh, the Watford game uh, away that was after the Scotland miss, and I, and that was the goal that I got. You know, I think I scored a goal against Coventry. Is Mick keeping you all out here, by the way? I think, yeah, just, uh, I think he just wanted us to kind of enjoy, enjoy it because, well, that was a perfect performance. You know, I think uh, we never, we never took the foot off the gas in the second half. So, yeah, he's, I think he, the, the fans will be delighted with the football that we've just seen and he's having his little talk out here and I think that's what he said. He says, look, we'll, we'll, we'll have the, the, the chat out here, but enjoy it. Big thank you, you know, make sure you thank the fans. Because he, he knows, he's recruited well, he knows that we're onto something special and it's a good group, you know, he kept everyone happy and it's a difficult thing to do when you're a manager because everyone wants to be in that starting 11 but that whole group of players, everyone brought something to the table, everyone did their, did their bit and I think that's that's testament to, to the gaffer and his staff but then for the players to put that into action as well, you know. And that was you, pretty much last off the field of play. I think that was Kites, yeah, having a little chat with Kites. It was just like, like you say, there was relationships all over the place, Mikey. Uh, you were you were in and about, in about it, so you you knew you knew that. But little things like you know the the debate club, uh, you know, like the the groups going up to to Glasgow and down to London. Just it was a close group, and there was no there was no cliques. Everyone got on. Way everyone, which was uh, which was a massive bonus. You know, you don't you walk into dressing rooms, uh, and 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 you can. I've been very lucky in the dressing rooms that I've that I've had, but that was definitely one of the best. 
It's a lovely place to finish. Thank you, as ever, to everybody who has sat through and listened to our nonsense for another game <laughs> on this series that we're bringing you. Old Gold Club, Big Match Revisited, powered by Blythe Group. That was Wolves 5, Nottingham Forest 1. See you soon.